In this uh, tutorial, I'll be describing how we can or how we can classify a structure as determinate, uh, statically determinate, statically indeterminate, uh, or a mechanism. So, what I mean by this is stati statically determinate means that write this down. Statically determinant means that we can work out all the forces um, just by doing global equilibrium or pin joints or method of sections. So, method of sections. Method of of joints. So you can work out all the forces normally, uh, or how we would statically. So what statically indeterminate means is we can't actually do this. So as you saw in the previous example, um, we we had a thing that was stati statically indeterminate, and we um, we worked it out using a different method other than static static ways. So here we go. Okay. So the way we can work we can find out whether something is statically determined or statically indeterminate, we can use this. So for a a joint frame we have J is number of pin joints. M number of force members or member forces and R number of reaction forces. Okay. Okay, so we have all this. So if it's statically determinant, that means that M plus R equals 2J and we can work out all of these things so just by using global equilibriums and things like that if it um, M plus R is greater than 2J then it is indeterminate so we can't work it out that way and then for a mechanism, which I'm not going to go too, too much into because there's not much on that. It just means it's moving essentially and we, don't, we won't cover that in this course. Uh, if it's less than 2J, then that is a mechanism. So in most cases you'll get determinant or indeterminate. Well actually in all cases in this course you'll get that. So I'll now look at a few examples of what I mean by this. So, say we have a sort of truss like, okay, let's draw this in, and this is a pin joint, and this is a roller joint, so that's attached to the ground, sorry. So. I'll redraw this in terms of reaction forces. So then we have pin joint there, pin joint there, pin joint there, pin joint there, reaction force there and there, and reaction force there. Okay, so now straight up let's work out what J is. So J is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. So J equals 4. And then M number of force members, all of these uh, members have forces in them, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, equals 5, and then how many reaction forces have we got? 1, 2, 3, reaction forces equals 3. So now M plus R equals 8, and 2J equals 8, therefore M plus R equals 2J, and therefore it is statically determinant.
Okay, so that's that's a simple example. I'll show you one for. Uh, I'll show you another one for indeterminate. So we have essentially the same system, but we just have another beam added in. So so we have this. But now we have this beam added here. There's not a join in here. So we have this. And this is the same thing here. Okay, so we still have the same reaction forces. So I'll just redraw this. We still have the same reaction forces here and here and here. So you have three. We still have the same number of joints. So we got joints still equals four. Reaction still equals three, but now members equals six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So now we have M plus R equals um, nine and J, two J equals eight. So then M plus R is greater than two J. So now this is statically indeterminate. Okay, so that's that's literally the concept. That's that's all. So if it's statically indeterminate, you can't work it out using standard methods. We have to use different methods, like that deformation method that we uh, you saw in our previous video. And that's it.